What's up, Twins fans? We're going to talk about the possibility of trading Jorge Polanco, uh, some things that I think are going to make that difficult, and some things that are working in the Twins' favor, uh, to be completely honest. I love Jorge Polanco. I don't want to see him go, but uh, this is the reality of the situation is it's out there, so let's throw it over to uh, John Morosi of MLB Network uh, on his report from the other day. Especially with Jorge Polanco, because of the arrival of Edouard Julien, the health of Royce Lewis coming up, he is someone that is available, and people around the industry believe there's a, a very strong chance that the Twins will, in fact, move Jorge Polanco this winter. So Polanco, a likely uh, trade candidate for the Twins. Um, also been reported this offseason is that the Twins are looking for first base and center field potential um, upgrades. Man, if Polanco does get traded... I really hope that it is for starting pitching, and that's going to be difficult given his kind of lack of excess value, to be honest, which we'll talk about in just a sec. Now, you know, I'm I'm of the mind that the Twins really do need a middle-of-the-order power bat, um, you know, so I'm not really against the Twins um, adding a big bat, but again, a big bat, not just a, you know, a depth piece, not just a complimentary guy. A big bat, because as we see here, I actually feel pretty decent about the Twins' sort of number of options or depth pieces or creative solutions, as I've put on this screen. Um, at first base, you've got Alex Kirloff. I know he's coming off injury, but in addition to him, you've put Julie in there a little bit. Miranda's going to be an option. He's going to be healthy again. Junior Severino was added to the 40-man roster. And then you could get creative and have Trevor Larnick put in some work there. Um, or even Jorge Polanco. You know, I, I just really don't want to see Jorge Polanco traded for a first baseman, is what I'm kind of saying here. That just seems like not productive. Just keep Polanco, teach him first base, or have uh, Julian play more first. Um, so I would think that would be a potential solution above trading him for a first baseman. Now in center field, you know, Byron Buxton, we know the deal. We know the deal with Byron Buxton. They're going to try to get him back out there this offseason. Um, they're hoping that that knee's going to hold up. That's the plan. That's plan A is to get him back in center field. But we know he's not going to play. He's not going to be playing 120 games out there or anything, even if that does work. And you can't really even count on that working. But uh, Willie Castro, to me, is a pretty damn good uh, plan B. And I know that's not as good as having Michael A. Taylor, I guess, as your, as your plan B to Buxton. Uh, but you're still sitting pretty good with Willie Castro, in my opinion. Nick Gordon, maybe he gets non-tendered. I don't know. Maybe he's not going to be around, but he's another option. Other guys they have, Max Kepler. I mean, it, I, it really frustrates me that Max Kepler seems unwilling to play center field. I don't know what the actual you know, situation is. He's he's made it clear he's not comfortable playing center field. Maybe he's not outright didn't that, you know, refusing to play there. Maybe Rocco's just sort of... Uh, willing to keep him in right field, but it, it's annoying to me as much center field need as there is that Max Kepler is not an option there. He should be. Uh, but Austin Martin, who we talked about the other day, he should be added to the 40-man roster soon. He's going to be an option there. Deshaun Kersey Jr., I mean, if you're really that hard up for center field, um, he's a guy you have internally who got to AAA and played pretty well as a very good defensive center fielder. Uh, certainly an option as well. So it's not like the Twins, if they didn't address these positions, did not would not have... Uh, plenty of options to go with. So I really don't want to see Jorge Polanco traded for really any kind of a bat, you know, if, if they're or, or prospects. This team shouldn't be trading major league players for prospects at this point. Uh, but one of the things that's hurting Jorge Polanco is we got to look at it um, like it is. The guy's not played a lot his, uh, himself. He hasn't played a lot the last two seasons. Um, you see here what I have uh, boxed in red. Those are his value, basically, the, his production and what value that is according to fan graphs the past two years so it's that that's he's produced above what he's gonna make in 2024 so that's good so he does have some excess value you would think but I still view him as a guy that could put together a season like he did in 2021 where he was worth 33 million dollars which I have highlighted in yellow um, I don't think anybody's gonna value him like that um, I really don't think anybody's gonna value him like that on the trade market I think they're gonna value him like he's produced the last two years and I think that's fair for an external team. Um, so like, let, let's try to make this concrete. I know this isn't, this isn't everybody's favorite tool. It's not my favorite tool, but it's the best one we have. This is some information at baseball trade values. I was trying to figure out who the best major league starting pitcher that we could get for Jorge Polanco in a straight up trade. Now, maybe that's not the approach the twins are taking. Maybe they package him with some prospects. I don't know. Uh, but the tricky part is, is 
they're not going to be very motivated to add salary. So we have to find a guy who also is fairly cost-controlled. And the best guy I came up with that could even possibly get a, a trade accepted among the guys who are qualified starters was J.P. Sears of Oakland. So, and that was even considered a moderate overpay. So that's, you know, that was the second worst qualified starting pitcher in baseball last year, J.P. Sears. So you can see, yeah, his, his surplus value is listed as 4.5. That's just not, you know, that's just not very good. And, and you could argue maybe this is wrong. And one thing that's to consider that may inflate Jorge Polanco's value um, is this. Um, this is the list of free agent second basemen. It is not good. It is not good, y'all. Uh, that is a rough situation. And to the left of that, that list I have is uh, the numbers 11 through 30 teams in terms of the war they got from their second baseman last year. Um, so some of these teams in here aren't really looking to compete or add a player like Jorge Polanco. Oakland wouldn't be looking to add a player like Jorge Polanco. That was me more trying to find a pitcher, uh, the, the, the highest pitcher on the qualified uh, guys list I could get for him who is also cost-controlled, by the way. Um, but, you know, we look through these teams, you know, I certainly think there's some teams that would be interested in upgrading second base. Um, you know, uh, some teams that stand out, Milwaukee, the Brewers, um, you know, they tried to uh, turn it over to Bryce Turang, who had a really bad year. Now, maybe they're still convinced he can be the guy there, and they just thought, oh, the rookie year, he went through, through some bumps. Um, I don't know. Boston, you know, another team, I don't know. They're in transition right now. I'm not sure if they're... It's hard for me to envision Boston ever really, like, totally rebuilding. So I could see them, you know, being there. Seattle was another team that stuck out. Um, but again, I'm not sure, you know, who who are you going to get from those teams? You know, if it's not... Made, and and the, basically where I'm, I'm heading to on this is... You know, it feels like the Twins are going to potentially trade Jorge Planco for prospects, and I, I hate that idea. I absolutely hate that idea um, at, the, at this stage. Uh, but, you know, we talked about it the other day with the Twins looking to cut payroll. At the end of kind of what uh, all of the movement, you know, and this is if they non-tender Kyle Farmer, they'll have somewhere between 6 and $21 million to add this offseason. So if they can... You know, shed that salary of Polanco's and add a guy, and then have some extra spending money. I don't know. Maybe it'll all work out in in the long run. Like like the Polanco trade on its own won't make sense, but how it opens them up to do other things will. I don't know. But um, I just really don't. I just really don't like the way this conversation is going. Uh, just being honest, taking a look at all that. Let me know what you think. Um, what the Twins should do with Jorge Polanco. You know, Max Kepler was also discussed in that John Morosi segment as well as another guy who could be traded. Um, you know, I'm not, maybe the Twins package both of those guys. I don't know. Anyway, that's my thoughts. Thanks for checking this one out. Let me know what you think. We'll talk again soon.